Okay, welcome back. So, if you guys are in the description tag of my uh, of the uh, tutorial here, there's a there's a link to the playlist. So, if you guys found this in a search and you came halfway through, there's a description tag, and in the description tag is the playlist, the full playlist A through Z for this entire video series. Okay. Now I want to talk about a type of CSS rule we haven't discussed yet, and that's called a class tag. Now class tags can be assigned any tag. Unlike ID tags, an ID tag with that exact name can only be used once per page, once per page. As an example, I could have something called my first paragraph ID, but I can't have another my first paragraph. I could have my first paragraph two, my first paragraph three, ID tags are unique per page. However, class tags, class tags that begin with a period can be assigned anything. So here's my objective. Here's what I like to do here. I want to stagger these images here. I'm going to put a couple more images here. I'm just going to repeat this a few times. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to copy. I'm going to get down here. And I'm going to paste. Now, do we save this? No, we did. Okay, so let's save this as version 12. File, save as file menu, save as 12. Okay, I just want to put a couple images down here. So I'm going to take this image, copy. I only have four monkeys, by the way. So, uh, you know, times are tough. I only have uh, room for four monkeys. I only have a budget for four monkeys. Okay, so here's my objective. I want to stagger images. I want to go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now, some of you might guess that, well, I can do an ID tag for the images. Well, the problem with that is now I have to have ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, ID 4. If we know it, I got too many IDs. Okay? So, a simple way to do this is with a class tag. So, classes are defined. Then classes are assigned. I define what the class does, and I assign it to something. So we're going to do a class that's specifically defined to the IMG tag. So classes are defined, and classes are assigned. So how do I define a class? A class starts with a period symbol. So if I make a rule unlike a pound symbol, which means an ID, and it render HTML tag is the name of the tag, body, h1, paragraph. Class tags or custom tags. You could totally make the name up similar to ID tag, but class tags with the period. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to select the tag. We're going to select the IMG tag. IMG tag. And we're going to hit the pause symbol. Now, I want to do a rule for IMG. IMG is inside of main content. But again, similar to what we did before, I don't want to talk to this paragraph tag. I don't care about the paragraph tag. I simply want to say IMG. Now, we have a rule for IMG. So I want to do a class tag that's tied to IMG tag. So how do I do that? We put in a period. Now, class tags are named whatever you want to name them. If you want to call it the Santa Claus tag, if you want to call it the Al Pacino tag, totally up to you. I would suggest calling it something that makes sense. So we want images to flow to the right. So we're going to call this R-I-G-H-T I-M-G float, which is right image float. Now notice I called it exactly that, right image float, not image right float. I did that for a reason. I'll explain that in another video. Okay, Right image float. Everything I do has a reason behind it. So I hit OK. Now, what does right image float do? Well, it floats to the right. So I'm going to go to the box category, IMG. I'm going to float to the right. Now, nothing's going to happen because I just made this long-winded speech about how classes are defined, then classes are assigned. But I do need to pay attention to something. The parent tag is still the IMG tag. IMG tag by itself, or an IMG tag specifically inside of main content, would be the parent tag. So we canceled out the left by floating this to the right. So if I float this to the right, I'd want a margin space to the left. So we're going to say 0.8 m's to the left. Okay. 
So if I, so very important step here, right cancel the left. So if it floats to the right, I don't want to margin space to the left. I'm sorry, if it's floating to the right, I have margin space to the left, but I don't want margin space to the right. So similar to the problem we had before with this monkey over here, we need to set the right value to zero, nothing. We're going to set the right to zero. Because floating to the right, I don't want margin space to the right. If you don't set it to zero, it's going to inherit from the parent tag. The parent tag is the IMG tag. So we hit OK. Make a change. Save a change. So this tag should go after the, let's put this after the first IMG tag. Okay. So this way it has consistency for our design. The whole purpose of organizing your CSS styles, guys, is six months from now, when you want to make a change to it, you don't have to get out your secret Dakota NASA space trajectory ring to figure out what the heck you did six months ago. So come up with a consistent flow to your CSS rules. So I just got done saying before that classes are defined and classes are assigned. So this is floating to the right because it's IMG tag, which is fine. If it's only going to be for one, it, an ID tag is totally acceptable. But I want to stagger multiple ones. So how do I do that? I select the tag. I don't select image. I select the tag. I select the tag. And based on these choices, these are my choices here. These are my choices. I have something called class. Class, and I pick right image float. That flows out to the right. So class tags are defined, then class tags are assigned. I assign them to something. I'm going to assign this to every other one. So this, I'm going to select this guy. In fact, let's do something here. I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to swap these. I'm going to cut this. Paste that. Cut this. Paste that. Just so they're different, so they're staggering, so it's not the same. So I want to float this to the right. So I select the tag, select the tag, and assign the class called right image float. Okay. I select the tag, I select the tag, and assign the class called right image float. So that's how I can get things to stagger. This way I can get one monkey going one way, the monkey, the other monkey going the other way. So I could use I, I could have used the ID tag, but the problem with ID tag is now I have to do ID tag two, ID tag three. So class tags used many times for the same site. So what appears under my menu? So let's say I don't want to float this guy to the right anymore. I select the tag and I just want to float him. None. So now he has no float. So I could assign classes inside my CSS palette. I define what the class does, and I assign it to something. Define, assign. So very cool technique here. Now, we'll do this in another video, or possibly another day. But classes can be used for colors. Classes can be used for floats to make my site flexible. I could have different class colors for my site. I can have different classes for floats. I can have different classes for width, height, div tags, etc, etc, etc. So this concludes this particular portion of this series here. We built a site totally from scratch using all kinds of CSS rules. Remember, we started out with nothing on the page. We built step by step by step using my proven method. Select the tag, make the rule. Select the tag, make the rule. I absolutely encourage you to go check out other videos because they'll, they'll, they'll torture you with bullshit. I hate to say that. With a lot of wasted code that you don't need to touch. You don't need to touch the code. You can do basically 98% of a Dreamweaver site without touching code. Just by touching the palette, all we did was select the palette here. We did a couple of copy and pasting things, and that's it. I shared with you along the way some of the code on how it thinks. This way, you're not intimidated by it. It's basically just tags inside the page. In fact, all Dreamweaver does is write code for the browser to interpret. All Dreamweaver does is write code. End of story. So enjoy the day. Enjoy the rest of your April Fool's Day. And uh, Carpe Diem, talk to you soon. Again, I apologize about the voice, but if you haven't seen the complete series, you can click inside the description tag 
and start from beginning. To, and I think this is a 13 or 14 part video series well over close to two hours worth of videos that I've prepared for you guys. Free of charge, of course. The only thing I suggest in return is to subscribe, like my video, tell a friend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do something nice for people, okay? Do something nice for someone today because I did something nice for you. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my video, send a trouble, look both ways, and uh, that's it. Have a good day.